Welcome back to Gary's Economics. Today we are going to teach you some game theory. Learning about game theory can teach us a lot about number one, how modern economists think. And number two, I've been thinking about it a lot recently with regards to difficulties I've been having and difficulties I think we're going to have with regards to fixing our economic system. So we're going to go through that today. Okay, so first a very quick introduction of what game theory is. So game theory is a very popular field of economics. Well, it's a field of mathematics really, which is popular nowadays in economics, where you basically turn real life situations into games. You say there's a certain number of players, maybe you and me, a two player game. We make moves, we play against each other and we get outcomes. And through game theory, we can analyze what you're gonna do, what I'm gonna do, what you should do, what I should do, and Hopefully we play the game better. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to explain to you the simplest and probably most famous game in game theory, which is called The Prisoner's Dilemma. Now, this is a super popular game and it's been used by a lot of economists to basically defend the idea that, that people are selfish. And the best way to understand it is to explain the game. Okay, so in The Prisoner's Dilemma, you've got two prisoners They've been arrested for doing something wrong. It could be anything. Let's assume they've been arrested for running a YouTube channel that says the government is full of idiots. And the police is sitting these two prisoners down in separate rooms. And they've got a little bit of evidence on both of these prisoners, but not enough to really, really hit them, put them in prison for a long time. So what they're trying to do is, they're trying to get both of the prisoners to grasp on each other, to give information on one another. And the way they do that is they say, listen, if you grasp on your friend, the other prisoner, then we'll reduce your prison time. And the way that they set this game up is like this. Okay, so there's two players in this game, right? Let's assume it's you and me. So, you and me. And Basically, we only have, it's a very, very simple game. We only have one choice to make each, which is whether or not we grasp on each other. And that means there are four possible outcomes in this game, which is either we both grasp or we both stay silent or you grasp and I stay silent or I grass and you stay silent. So I'm drawing out a diagram here, which basically covers all the four situations in the game. And we can view it as basically a move from you. So in this diagram, your two options are listed here on the top. Grass on the left, stay silent on the right. My two options are listed down the side, grass on the top, stay silent on the bottom. So this covers all the four situations. And the police have set it up so that they want you to grasp. So they say to you, if you grasp and your friend doesn't grasp, so I don't grasp, we'll let you go away completely free and we'll send your friend to jail for 10 years. So this is the situation here where you grasp and I stay silent. So it's this bottom left situation. And in that case, they give you zero years and they give me 10 years. And they make the same offer to me. So if I grasp and you stay silent, you'll get 10 years and I'll get zero years. If we both stay silent, then they don't have much evidence on us at all. So they can only give us one year each. So that's this bottom right corner. We both stay silent. You one year, me one year. If we both grasp, then they've got a lot of evidence on both of us and they'll put us both in jail for five years. That's this top left corner, we both grasp. Okay, so now we've got the basic setup of the game. We can start to analyze it from a game theory perspective. And what game theory will tell us to do is consider your situation. Now you could be in one of two situations. Situation number one is I'm grasping on you. And situation number two is I'm silent and I'm not grasping on you. So you analyze what you should do in both situations. Now consider I'm grasping on you. Now you have a choice. Either you grasp on me and you get five years, or 
you don't grass on me and you get 10 years. So what game theory will say is, now we've, we've really simplified this game. If Gary Grass is on you, your choice is five years in prison or 10 years in prison. Obviously five years is better. So if I grass on you, you should grass. That's your strategy. If Gary Grass is, you should grass. Now situation number two, what if Gary stays silent? Well, now you have a choice. Either you grass on me and you get zero years in prison, you get to go free, or you don't grass on me and you get one year in prison. Now you have a choice. Zero years in prison or one year in prison. Zero years in prison is obviously better than one year in prison. So again, you should grass. So in both situations, whether I grass on you or I don't grass on you, you should grass on me because you will get less time in prison. So that means we have what game theorists would call a dominant strategy. Whatever I do, you should grass on me. Grassing on me is the best outcome for you regardless of my action. So according to economists, game theorists, you should definitely grass on me. That is your dominant strategy. Now, of course, this game is, is totally symmetrical. So if we analyze the game from my perspective, it will be exactly the same analysis as what we just went through now. So that means obviously I also have a dominant strategy. Whatever you do, I should grass on you. And whatever I do, you should grass on me. Now, this means that we have what in game theory they call a Nash equilibrium, which is named after the insane mathematician, John Nash, which means I definitely know what I'm gonna do because I'm gonna grass on you whatever. You definitely know what you're gonna do. You're gonna grass on me whatever. So we will both definitely grass on each other. I can't change what you do. You can't change what I do. It's a stable equilibrium. We will both grass on each other and we will end up here in the top left box where we both get five years in prison. Now, what is interesting about this game is there's another box, this bottom right corner, where if we both stay silent, it would have been better for both of us. I would have got one year, you would have got one year. As it is, we're both grassing, we're both getting five years. So we're ending up in a pretty bad situation. So it's interesting, right? Why, why does it happen that we end up in this bad situation? Why can't we just both not grass and, and be in a better situation? The reason for that is, we've done the analysis, if I know you're not grassing, it's better for me to grass. So I'm gonna grass anyway. And, and you're in the same situation. If you know I'm not grassing, you're gonna grass. So basically, we can't trust each other because we're both selfish, we're both gonna grass, and the end result is we're gonna get a bad outcome for both of us. Now, this is the most famous game in game theory, and it's often used by game theorists, microeconomists, to basically justify the idea that that people are selfish and that basically fucks us up because we're selfish but there's nothing you can do about it because people are selfish and I think this analysis and people who are very good at game theory probably shouldn't be making this analysis I think it's really interesting and I, and I want to explain to you why so we are ending up in the bad outcome because we both selfishly chose to grass and there's nothing we can do about that because because people are selfish, right? But actually, the reason this happened is because we, when we did the game theory, we assumed that, and we never spoke about this assumption, I never mentioned this assumption when we went through the game, we assumed that both players act in such a way that the only thing they care about is reducing their prison time. So actually, when we went through the analysis, we kind of assumed that the players were selfish. In reality, if you were in this situation with your friend, you might say, well, you know, I, I don't want to betray my friend or I, I trust that my friend is not going to grasp me up. So I'm, I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna betray him because you know, he's my friend and I trust him. But we didn't talk about this at all in, in our analysis, right? And there are many situations where this game has been tried out in, in game shows or in economist experiments. And what you find is actually a lot of people in this kind of situation, they won't betray their friend. They will, they will stick with their friend because they like them or because they trust them or because they think they can get the better outcome by sticking together. So actually, the people who have kind of proved themselves to be selfish in this, analy in this analysis are the economists themselves. 
It was the economists that said, you will definitely betray your friend because the only thing you care about is your prison time. And that analysis is correct. If the only thing you care about in the whole world is reducing your prison time in this game, you should definitely betray your friend. That is true. But the analysis that we did, that we will both grasp, that answer, that equilibrium, that response, only becomes correct if we make that assumption. So if we assume selfishness, we get selfish outcomes, which may be bad. In reality, this game does nothing to tell us whether people are selfish or not. It only tells us that here is a game where the correct strategy, if the only thing you care about is reducing your prison time, is to be selfish. So this is my first conclusion here. Anyone who ever says that game theory suggests that people are selfish um, basically doesn't understand game theory. Game theory can tell you what to do if we know exactly what you want. If we know what you want, we can tell you what to do. If we know that you're selfish, we can tell you which outcome, sorry, which strategy is, is probably going to give you the best selfish outcome. If you're not selfish, if you care about other people, then you can probably work together and you can probably get towards this good outcome of only getting one year in prison each. But that only works if, if you have a degree of non-selfishness. Now I want to get on to the reason that I've been thinking about this a lot recently. Now the reason for that is, so as you know, I've been running this YouTube channel for three, more than three years now. And the main idea behind this YouTube channel is that the economy as it is, is in a really bad situation. Um, living standards for ordinary families are getting worse and worse quite quickly, and they will continue to get worse. And what I continually say on this channel is that if we get together and force politicians to tax the rich more aggressively, to force wealth to flow to ordinary people rather than away from ordinary people, we can make inequality come down, we can make the economy better, and we can make living standards better for ordinary people. And yet, when I speak to politicians about this idea, including politicians who are on the left, like politicians in the Labour Party, very often they say to me, you know, we can't publicly support these kinds of ideas because they're not popular, because they're not vote winners. And when I publicly speak about these ideas, I very often get people push back against me and say, oh, we basically, we don't want to believe. That's true. And when I get these kind of responses, what I often feel is, especially when I'm talking to better off people, these are people who are busy people, good jobs, good salaries. And they basically have a choice to make when they hear my theories, which is, do I believe this guy? Do I agree with this guy? And do I start to devote some of my time, some of my energy towards basically help, helping him achieve his goals? Or do I ignore it and say, listen, that's nonsense. I don't really care about that. And just let him, him do his thing. And when I see this player in front of me, I'm often reminded of the prisoner's dilemma because that person is in a similar situation, right? Whatever I do, whether my project is a success or not, whether we manage to reduce inequality or not, this guy has to decide whether to devote some of his time, some of his resources, some of his energy towards reducing inequality. And the truth of the matter is, you as an individual, every individual in this country, whether they choose to support this or not, probably won't make a difference to whether we're successful or not. So that person basically has the choice of supporting and making some sort of guaranteed loss of time or just ignoring it and using his time in, in a selfish way. And whatever choice he makes, he will probably, well, society will probably end up in the same situation. It'll, it'll, we will either succeed and the economy will get better or we will fail and the economy will get worse. So we're, once again, we're in this kind of interesting situation where basically, if enough people are willing to act unselfishly, which means devoting a little bit of time, a little bit of energy towards watching our videos, understanding what's happening, sharing the videos, telling your friends and family, trying to build a big movement 
so that a majority of this country understands if we don't fix inequality, the economy will get worse. If enough people do that, then we can solve this problem. If not enough people do that, then you will continue to see what, what we are seeing, which is living conditions continue to fall relatively quickly. There's big increases in poverty. Life gets worse and worse for ordinary people in this country. And I think it's an interesting kind of, essentially, it's a prisoner's dilemma for not just two players, but the country as a whole. Every individual person in this country can be a little bit better off just not bothering about it, basically. Just, just do what you can for yourself, for your family. Just only worry about you and the people closest to you. And if enough people make that decision, the economy will collapse and ordinary families will be poor. Or people make that sacrifice, a guaranteed sacrifice of, of their time and their energy, and people and protect the ordinary people of the country, avoid the collapse of the economy. And I think it's it's a really interesting kind of philosophical dilemma, right? Because you know, I grew up in this country and I grew up in a culture which was very much sort of get rich or die trying. And um, you know, I believe it's important to look after your family and, and I understand the desire to try and be selfish and to try and get rich. But it's created this really interesting situation where if, if ordinary people can be convinced in large enough number to be greedy, then we know with certainty ordinary people's kids and grandkids will be poor. It's interesting, right, because you would think being greedy would, would make you rich. But we've created this game where if we can convince enough people, poor people and ordinary people, to be greedy enough, then we can absolutely bankrupt the kids of poor and ordinary people. So in, in a sense, it's kind of a, it's kind of a test, really. It's a, it's a test for the people of this country, basically. Are enough people willing to make that sacrifice of time and effort to educate themselves, to educate each other, that the only way we can reduce inequality is together? Or basically, are we too selfish to do that? And are we going to drive ourselves into poverty? So, listen, game theory teaches us, not that people are selfish, but that if enough people are selfish, basically, we can completely fuck them over. And I think this is kind of the situation that we are in as a country. Um, I think the culture of our country has sort of moved in a direction in the last 40, 50 years where people have been trained to be selfish. And the big problem with this is if everyone is selfish and everybody fights selfishly, then it becomes easy for the very powerful and the very rich to, to take everything from the ordinary and from the weak. And, and that is what is happening, essentially. I, I believe in the economy and that is why life is getting worse. And the only power that ordinary people have to protect themselves from the rich and the powerful is that there's a lot of them. And they only use that power if they act unselfishly and work together. So listen, I believe we can fix the economy. We can only do it by dealing realistically with inequality. Um, the rich are not going to support that and they're going to oppose it and, and, and they do oppose it. But we can stop that by working together. Um, I'm going to do that. I'm going to keep working on it. That's why we put these videos out every week. And um, I hope you do too. So please watch these videos, share these videos and um, help us bring people together and fix this economy by understanding it better. Thank you.